Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Citadel's Parents and Cadet Town Hall for June 2021. I'm Commander Bill Lind. I'll be moderating tonight when we get to the question and answers. Without further ado, the president of the Citadel, General Glenn Walters. Thanks, Libby, and uh, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great summer. Uh, to my right, I guess, stage, or to my left, stage right to you is uh, Colonel Tom Gordon, class of 91, our, our new commandant as of Wednesday, sure. Wednesday. And, uh, you all remember our favorite Brigadier General, Dr. Selden, our provost of the college. And it's our pleasure to be with you here tonight. Uh, I think I'd like to start out. I know we'll get to question and answers. Uh, and that's really the purpose of this meeting is to answer whatever questions you have. I'm going to focus on uh, class of 25. I hope uh, a lot of you are out there and your and your and your parents are there. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, we'll see you in a, in a very few short weeks. But uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, uh, thank, and I'm pretty sure no one from the class of 21 is on the Zoom call because uh, they've all graduated and they're off doing great things. Uh, but uh, congratulations to uh, the class of 21. Uh, their leadership was was the key implement, instrument to allow us to completely uh, complete last year's school year. So I'm, I'm very proud of each and every one of you. Uh, I'm very proud of the uh, uh, the rising seniors, the class of 22. I'm very much looking forward to, to their leadership taking over as we get back to uh, uh, what we do best here on campus. And also welcome to uh, anybody from the class 23 or 24. Uh, class 24 arguably had uh, the most challenging knob year because uh, they did it all during a pandemic. And if they stuck around, uh, they're dedicated. And, and thank you very much. Uh, for the class of 25 uh, and the parents, I'll just give you a kind of a once over on what the class is looking like right now. Uh, right now we have 805 deposits. Uh, looks like a very healthy class. 119 uh, female cadets uh, up by 14.8% and 211 minority up by 24%. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And um, I'm very appreciative of all the parents uh, from last year. I think your support of the cadets on campus also is a key component of our success. Um, what's going on campus? So when you, and we're gonna welcome you back and I'll say it up front right now. Uh, we intend to go back to normal operations uh, come July when the athletic cattery gets here. And when the uh, freshmen matriculate, there'll be a normal matriculation in August. Um, for those of you who've been on campus before you, and you haven't been back because of the pandemic, uh, a couple things that you might might notice different. Uh, we have a new school of business in Baston Hall. We're very, very proud of that and, uh, and would welcome you to go down and take a look at that. Uh, for those of you that are alumni, uh, it might still have a couple of bricks standing, but I doubt Capers Hall will be anywhere near what you saw. I think they've gotten about 15% of that thing uh, torn down. I know that because it's right outside my office. Um, the other thing during sports season, you will find uh, that we, we do have our new turf. We played on it uh, last year in the spring uh, and we'll have a new scoreboard uh, thanks to the class of 73. Uh, you also notice and, uh, and invite you to go down and visit our uh, new boating center, uh, which is a, a magnificent building and, and We've got sailboats and rowboats and power boats and all kinds of things now. So uh, the, a lot of things have changed on campus and, and much to our better. Uh, when you get back uh, in the fall, uh, a couple of, we're going to go to a normal schedule. A couple of things that will be different is uh, we have committed, just like it, we've committed to a, a lot of our uh, uh, classes, uh, we've committed to uh, making up the homecoming that we missed last year. Uh, our 30, 40, and 50 year uh, uh, class graduates uh, really look forward to the, those big uh, numbered homecomings. So we'll, we'll have a homecoming in uh, September and a homecoming in November. Uh, but we will, uh, we will go back to normal operations. Uh, one of the a couple of things that'll help us for the class 25, uh, on the admissions webpage, you can tell us what your medical status is, whether you've had a vaccine or not, uh, and that will help us uh, gather the data. We'll also canvas everybody who get, gets back on campus. Uh, we are not mandated the, the uh, vaccine. I'll, I'll answer that question up 
up front right now. Uh, we strongly recommend it. Uh, one of the things that it does give us is operational flexibility because if uh, someone has uh, the vaccine and we do uh, potentially have uh, someone test positive on campus, uh, the vaccinated person is unaffected. There's no close contact. We will have uh, uh, testing available uh, on campus and, and as needed, and we will have vaccines available. So that's what will happen. For the class of 2025, uh, you will you'll get to see when you matriculate the famous Siddle Family Association, and these will be uh, people that are the parents of uh, cadets from prior years, and they will help you uh, matriculate, get all your stuff moved into your barracks. Uh, they will tell you uh, where, where you need to go and uh, before you get in, get to check into the Corps of Cadets, uh, and that's who you'll see. They all wear uh, kind of light light blue uh, soil shirts, wonderful people, and uh, they're, they're dedicated to this, uh, this college and, and helping out the incoming class. In fact, last year during matriculation, uh, because of the way we had to do it during the pandemic, uh, they weren't allowed to uh, to come in and do what they normally do, but they still showed up and they're actually outside the main gate as a cheering section for everybody that, uh, that that came on campus that day. So those are the the basics right now. There's a lot to the schedule, but I want, want you to remember we are going to go back to normal operations and we'll be prepared uh, structurally and uh, capability-wise for anything uh, that might pop up uh, with relation to the virus or anything else. So... I know it's not a, a once around pretty quick, but uh, let's entertain your questions, have a conversation. Okay, sir, we're getting, we have a couple of questions on the topic of what matriculation day will look like. Okay. Uh, the process and procedure. All right, so I'll, I'll go over the basics and I'll, I'll turn to my compatriots uh, if they want to add, add and amplify. Um, the barracks will open, I think it's 07, and, uh, and that'll be announced. And basically the procedure is, uh, this is a cadet run operation, not like last year. We brought, them, brought every class 24 in in waves. Uh, this is a normal matriculation. Everybody shows up, you'll get directed to the barracks, you'll drop your cadet off, your cadet will be um, uh, accepted in the barracks, you can help him move into his room, all those kinds of things. Normally speaking, uh, all of the freshmen, the knobs, will be in their rooms and complete matriculation in, in less than three hours. That's what we used to do. We'll see how it works. And there's other functions on campus. Uh, we will. Uh, one of the things that uh, we all missed last year was getting to meet the, all the freshman parents, um, and we we're putting that back in. So you'll have a, a question and answer period with us so you can meet us and, and ask us questions. You'll also find all of us. Uh, as you drop your cadets out, we will be walking up and down the battalions, uh, seeing how it goes. And uh, believe it or not, we always see some somebody we know who is bringing her son and daughter here. Uh, uh, also in McAllister Fieldhouse, we'll have all of our uh, tables set up. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to, to Sally to kind of tell you what information is there for your uh, perusal and, and, and engagement. Right. So in um, McAllister Fieldhouse, we'll have what we call an information fair. So you'll have access to most all of our units across campus will be in at, at that fair. So you can ask questions, you can make your way around, you, you can talk to somebody at the cadet bookstore. If you wanted to talk to somebody in ROTC, if you want to talk to somebody in the chaplain's office, it'll all be in one central location. And um, we encourage you, once you drop off, to go over and really mingle and get to know people and ask questions. We'll also have some food and beverage, maybe some coffee, so that you probably need it by then. And then we're planning to make an address. The final times have not been cast in stone, so please recognize we're, we're thinking that we will provide an address to the parents around 10.45 a.m. For the parents out there, I would say the most important thing you need to know about uh, matriculation day is what battalion your son or daughter has been assigned to. So that's the most important piece of information. Once you know that, as the general said, the CFA will be there, the cadre will be there, they'll receive you, you just let them know what battalion and then they'll, they'll point you in the right direction and it'll we'll, be a well-oiled machine at that point. <laughs> okay, sir, uh, we're, getting, we're getting a few detailed questions about uh, 
what matric matriculation day will look like. I would recommend to everybody out there, a lot of these details are going to be provided online and will be provided to the freshman families. Uh, things about times, places, the general, and Colonel Gordon covered some of them. But uh, a lot of the nuts and bolts will, will be coming out. The one, we do have a couple of questions on uniform fitting. Um, and uh, specifically, uh, female incoming knobs usually are fitted early. Are we planning to do that again this year? I, I don't know, Libby. I'm going to have to get back to, we'll make sure that that's put out. Yeah, so the, it, it's, just remember what matriculation day is. It, it, it's to assemble the core, uh, introduce them to the cadre. Uh, haircuts will be in there. Uh, we got to feed them. Uh, and then there's a, a number of stations they'll go to. They'll... They'll go to uh, get an ID card. They'll go to uh, uh, the tailor shop. They'll go to the cadet store. Uh, they'll get their room set up. Um, and they'll take the oath of office uh, later that afternoon. And you'll be surprised how well they march uh, after being here for uh, less than 24 hours. Um, these all take time, but that's why we have a cadre and a staff who sequence all of this in. And I think we're probably going to accomplish everything we need to matriculation uh, to get them bedded down, uniforms of some kind, uh, and then we're going to, the, the next day will be to catch up on any that that didn't get to go to the uh, the tailor shop, but uh, but it, it's all scripted out, and uh, and the cadre is responsible for taking those, uh, those knobs uh, over to each station. Um, there, the, I'll just, for the for the moms out there for class 2025, uh, you know, when you're on campus and after you talk to us, you're more than welcome to go over to uh, Mark Clark Hall. That's where our bookstore is. That's where you can buy some, you know, sit mom t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I just want to, I'll forewarn you, I mean, that's also where our barber shop is. So uh, I did have a, an instance uh, two years ago where uh, a mom uh, had gone to the bookstore, bought some things. And then she saw her son uh, after his haircut uh, go back out and get in a line. Uh, I think that was a little bit of a shock to her, but uh, uh, but they do. But they, they, the males do get a do get a haircut you know, when they get here. Okay, uh, kind of pivoting off a lot of stuff coming in on matriculation day. Uh, again, company and battalion assignments will come as the class forms. Uh, you will be informed of that. Uh, questions about uh, the swearing-in ceremony and how long parents can stay on campus. Uh, sir, I know that you already mentioned uh, we'll, we'll set the time for the uh, the parents' address that you and yeah. the other folks will give. Yeah. So the, the I mean, uh, uh, when they come out for the swearing-in ceremony, it's probably the last thing they do before the evening meal. Uh, the... Typically, some parents will hang around to look at it, but not that many. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't. Uh, you know, matriculation day has a lot of moving parts. Uh, some people drive uh, long distances to drop their cadet off uh, and elect to go home instead of wait around for six hours to, to watch that. Uh, but you're more than welcome to, particularly if you're local. That there's, I don't believe there's any issue with that. Um, you know, uh, the biggest thing we do on matriculation day is get accountability and organization. We get them organized in units, companies, squads, uh, in their battalions, uh, and we get them organized and connected with who they're going to go through the fourth class system with. And that's a real objective. Uh, uh, the, uh, the transformation for the parents will be very much a, a re uh, uh, apparent uh, when they come home for their first leave in Thanksgiving, um, uh, you, they will uh, you will see uh, the efforts of the fourth class system. Uh, they will be able to accomplish more in a 24 hour period than they ever that you ever thought possible. And you should see a, a, a big difference in in, in how they uh, comport themselves, and and that's part of the system. Uh, but matriculation day. Uh, you, you know, it, there, there's not a whole lot to you, for you to do except walk around campus. But please feel free. Uh, go look at the places that I've mentioned. It's our campus is pretty centrally located, right around the parade field. 
uh, you know, we have a stadium that's, you know, down Haygood Avenue a little bit. The Alumni Center's there, and uh, and a lot of you will come in that gate, uh, and you'll be told which gate to come in because they will have traffic loop flows for these two battalions come in this gate and go here and uh, come in this gate for these uh, uh, battalions. But uh, uh, there's, there's nothing stopping you if you'd like to get your – get your son or your daughter uh, matriculated, uh, look around campus, come meet us, go talk to all the people who, who have uh, information to give you over McAllister Fieldhouse. And then um, there's nothing scheduled for you after that. And, uh, but that doesn't mean you can't go look at the chapel, the library, Mark Clark Center, Mark Clark Hall. Grab a cup of Starbucks. You know, there's a Starbucks over there now, uh, all those things. So, uh, and you will, if you stay a little, if you linger on campus, you will see uh, the knobs being uh, uh, marched around to these different stations where they have to go to, um, you know, get the basics on the first day. And then over time, they will get everything they need uh, to be a successful student. Um, the academics will start 25th. 25th. Classes. Classes will start on the 25th. Uh, it's a different story when classes start um we are we are here for the for the education of your son and daughter uh, first and foremost and uh, the military system is what we believe gives them the best chance of success and uh, uh the, they'll uh it's a difference between the first 10 days of cadre and when when they go to class because when they go to class go to class fourth class is still in effect but uh but the uh, their their main purpose here is to get a great education. You want to amplify any of that, or no? Um, just so parents are aware that we are having uh, starting to do the course registration process. So if your son or daughter is coming to CSI, they may in fact make some changes to their class schedule during their time here, or they in fact might register themselves. But it's important that information will be available to them on our Lasane Gateway. Yeah, so uh, Sally mentioned. Uh, CSI, Citadel Success Institute. Um, I think most of you know what that is. Uh, uh, I, I recommend that because uh, they'll be familiar with their surroundings because they came there, they'll get credit, mm -hmm. and they'll start to get their academic uh, juices flowing during CSI. Uh, and there is some uh, benefit, I believe, uh, for their successor if they've seen it before and they've, so they know where the barracks is, they know where the mess hall is they know where all, all these things are i mean anytime you go somewhere new uh just learning you know uh, if, you, if you've been in the military as long as we have you know every two two or three years you, you know you, you move and you get to a new place and you got to find out where you get gas where's the tailor shop you know where, where can i get a haircut where can i eat uh the good news is all that's pretty much within 100 yards <laughs> distance from their barracks uh, so it'll get to see the, but it just it gives you some sense of uh, of where they are, and there'll be there'll be a leg up on the ones that don't go to CSI because they'll know where stuff is. Right. Also, get to know their classmates. Uh, get to know, start uh, the one thing that happens here is the classes will bond. Each class has its own unique identity, but founded and based on our core values and our mission. Uh, and that's where it starts when they first meet each other. And then they'll, uh, they'll figure out how to uh, help each other get through the fourth class system. They'll, uh, and it's, it's an amazing thing to, to watch happen over that first year. Okay, sir. Uh, we have several questions. Uh, the theme is masks on campus, both cadets, visitors, the whole smash. Yeah. Uh, right now, masks are not mandated uh, on campus. Uh, the you know when the when we get to the school year, uh, whatever the appropriate protocols are is, is what we will follow for those that are unvaccinated. I can't tell you what those are right now because uh, you know if you if you look at uh, the people sitting around a room with me uh, sixty days ago, you know we're all wearing masks, no one had a vaccine, and, and, and now here we are. We're all vaccinated. We we and I uh, track what's going on with uh, 
what requirements are living on us by uh, the CDC and, uh, and, the, and the state. Um, I'll give you some numbers uh, if you're interested. And uh, if any of my classmates have a child coming in class 25, do not make fun of my reading glasses because I got to read my, my data. So in this, in this county, I know that all of you are in different places in the, in the country, uh, but in this county, in the last 14 days, uh, they've had two to three uh, average positives a day, and they've had eight days in the last 14 with zero positives. Um, in this county right now, there's 62.6% who have at least uh, one vaccine and 55.5% who are complete. If you, and this is not scientifically provable, but if you look at um, the positive cases in this county uh, and you add those to the vaccinated, I know those numbers at some point will overlap, but if they don't, uh, and I think we have a lot of people who actually had the virus and never got tested for it, never got tested positive, those numbers the experts say is could be upwards of 33 or 44 percent somewhere around there but just with what was tested uh people have had the virus and at least one vaccine uh, that puts us to 75.3 percent in this county um so you could add another five or six percent to that if if you uh if you think that there's people that had the virus in this country over the last 15, 16 months and weren't tested, so which I, I think is is what they're saying. The, if you do the reading on the literature now, they're they're saying if you if you've had the had the virus and you've had a vaccine, uh, they're now because we always we're always waiting for okay when do I have to get a booster or whatever that is. Uh, but uh, right now they're saying if you've had the virus or and you got vaccinated or you're fully vaccinated. Uh, they keep extending how long that lasts. And right now there's some studies that say it might give you a lifetime immunity, particularly if you had the virus and the vaccine. So but that's kind of the, the numbers that we are around here. Like I said, uh, when you come on campus, you don't, it's not required that you wear a mask. Um, we, if you go around Charleston right now, I know it's different in every part of the country, but uh, my wife's been traveling, I've been traveling and, uh, I still see people uh, who wear masks. I know they're vaccinated, uh, but they're free to do that for their own protection. They're, you know, it's going to be, it's going to come down to our own responsibilities. You know, what we're going to do is organize and and uh, do the best we can to make sure that we accomplish the civil experience and what you would expect to get here uh, by managing that risk. Well, um, really encouraging people to get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it it makes it a lot easier if something happens, and I just told you the numbers now, but that's the numbers today. I don't know what they're gonna do in uh, September, October, November. Uh, and what I've learned through running this school during the pandemic is whatever assumptions I make on Monday probably are gonna be changed on Wednesday and Friday. Uh, I do still have on tap uh, uh, 12 uh, medical experts uh, who advise us, and my plan is, uh, when we when we canvass the core when they get back and we find out where we are, both of people have had the virus or had been vaccinated, uh, we're going to share that uh, data with them uh, on on what the numbers look like and and we'll look at their recommendations. Um, and you know, so we'll we won't uh, uh, we're not going to overreact. We're not going to underreact either. We'll have well of options available, um, and we have a, a visiting team facility that. We can quarantine up to 52 there and some Wilson housing units that we can quarantine over there. Uh, we never last year got anywhere close to our uh, uh, max capacity on, on campus for for quarantining. So we're, we're prepared. Uh, it's not, I don't predict we're going to be that uh, dramatic this year, but but we will, like I said, we'll have, uh, we'll get whatever medical support people want and we'll have testing available. The one thing I don't know right now is what the NCAA regulations are gonna to be to our athletes. And that was uh, one of their biggest driving factors last year because certain sports we had to test twice a week, some three times a week. Uh, and we will have those capabilities uh, uh, here, but I don't know what that testing requirement is gonna be. 
So we're, we don't plan on any mass testings right now because of these, this data I've just shown you. So we'll pivot off that last bit. Uh, question about uh, will the NCAA or the Citadel require the athletes to be vaccinated? No, um, I don't believe so. Number one, uh, there, the bottom line is this. Uh, this vaccine uh, appears to be very, very successful, but it still hasn't been fully approved by the FDA. Uh, it's emergency use right now, and that puts some legal limits on what we can require. Um, if you've matriculated your son or your daughter, uh, you know there are certain vaccines that if you go to, I don't care if you go to K through 12 or, or college, there's certain vaccines you have to have, like uh, um, measles, mumps, and rubella, and there's a, there's a number of them that, that have been on the books for years. Uh, uh, this one is not there yet. Uh, will it be there in the future? I don't know. But uh, we're not mandating that. We're strongly encouraging it. Okay, sir. Uh, we'll have one more uh, on matriculation. Does matriculation and athletic cadre, does it work in a similar fashion to matriculation and cadre uh, that you described yeah. for the regular Yeah, cadets? I mean, uh, uh, we have athletic cadre uh, basically for the fall sports so that they can come in here uh, – get uh, matriculated and uh, start their training cycle. I mean, uh, our first, first football game is uh, September, uh oh, brain fart, uh, 3rd. Is that three fingers you're putting up or two? Four. That's three. Sure. Okay, that's three. <laughs> so September 3rd is our first game. Yeah, so it's away. Yeah, it's away game. Uh, so that means, you know, the, the, Athlete athletic cadre starts July 26th. July 26th. So, you know, less than a month from now. And that gives them, you know, the six weeks that's, that we try to get in to get them up and ready uh, for their first game. The same with the soccer, volleyball team, et cetera. Okay, sir. Uh, we'll pivot to some academic questions. Great. Are there any CSI slots still available? There are, absolutely. And you can actually get online and look at the CSI website that will direct you, but we are still enrolling uh, knobs into that program. We have classes open, and it may be helpful, um, especially depending on your field of study, to talk to Chris Fudge, who will advise you about the right class to take. We're really encouraging students in certain disciplines, like such as engineering, to do math. And so the sooner you register, in case we need to open new classes, the better. So I would strongly encourage folks to register and come to CSI. And, and, and Doc, great segue. Uh, also have some questions from new parents and cadets mm -hmm. about how to ensure that they're registered for fall semester properly. Right. So registration occurs in two ways. Um, I mentioned, I alluded to this earlier. Uh, one is that for uh, cadets not attending CSI, you'll be registered by um, staff on campus, and that process is already underway. For some of our um, incoming knobs that are in CSI, you will be registering four courses yourself while you're here. You also have the opportunity to interact with your advisors. Um, that's already occurring in the online orientation for those cadets not attending CSI. But it's kind of an iterative process. You may get registered for some courses. You have been identified in your major based on the interest that you articulated. And again, the sooner that you look at those, that registration, when you get to campus and meet with your advisor, you can make some adjustments to your schedule. But we want to make sure everybody has a full schedule as the fall semester begins. And ma'am, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand on a question that we've got here. Uh, it speaks to the academic support that a freshman has. And uh, the graduates out there will appreciate, i.e., who do I or my child call when they're failing Colonel Rembert's English class? Well, remember. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent question. Um, there are, we have a number of places that you can reach out to. We have a, an executive director for student success, John Robinson. We also have our director of the Student Success Center, 
uh, Robert Pickering, and that's just the name too. Um, every school has a set of advisors. Almost anybody at the Citadel, whether it's your faculty member, whether it's your advisor, whether it's your academic officer uh, with, within your company, there are a number of different individuals. If you reach out for help, they can make sure you're getting the kind of help that you need. Um, we have a number of different support services, whether it's writing, whether it's math, whether it's oral uh, speaking. So there are ways in which you can get lots of support. There's no shortage of people willing to step out and help you make sure you find the right person, especially if you're struggling in your classes within the first week or so. It's probably helpful to meet with that advisor and make some adjustments potentially to your schedule. I'll, I'll just emphasize one of the points that Sally mentioned. Uh, she said academic officer, uh, every company on the campus has a cadet senior who's the academic officer for that company. And and he spends a great deal of time uh, looking at the progress of the freshmen and identifying people and, and that might need some extra help and offering, that's the, the first line of defense is go to your company academic officer. He, they are trained to know all these services. Your, your, your child doesn't have to remember them all, but they're all gonna be in the company and that academic officer is a cadet. Um, and generally the academic officers also uh, serve as tutors. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're living in the barracks with someone they can go to uh, immediately. And it's also the duty of the academic officer to check on all the freshmen to see how they're doing. And, and because some people don't, you know, raise their hand when they need help, but they're, they're trained to understand that I might need to go talk to someone like me who wants some help in engineering. Okay, one more um, on academics. Uh, question asked uh, about tutoring, and it might be a good opportunity to talk about the Student Success Center. Yes, um, we actually have something we call supplemental instruction, and that is um, specifically designed for particular classes that um, tend to be more challenging, especially in that first and second year. We also have group tutoring. We also have special tutoring within the School of Engineering um, designed for certain classes. So one of the things that you're going to find, uh, General Walters alluded, talked about, you know, kind of reiterated what I said about the academic officers. We actually have um, uh, faculty advisors and staff advisors for every company as well. You also have an academic officer, I mean an academic advisor. We also have student success with embedded within some of our schools, such as the School of Engineering. If you're an athlete, we have special support services for our athletes that works very closely with the Student Success Center. So across campus, you're going to find there are lots of opportunities to get support. One of the things that I would tell you, speaking to the parents here, that's fantastic is we have evening study period every night. And during that period, that's also an opportunity to get some assistance, to talk to your academic officers as you need to, to talk to your, um, maybe your academic advisor for your company if you have questions. Um, but we do encourage students early on to use the tutoring and the supplemental instruction. It's better to do it within the first week or so of classes than to wait to after you get those midterm exams. Right? You can still make adjustments after midterms, but it's much better to go ahead, whether you think you need that extra instruction or not, you're going to find that students who performed well in classes previously serve in those roles as tutors and supplemental instructors, so they've been in that classroom before, they've been very successful in that class, and they can really kind of bring the material down in a way that's sometimes more accessible, um, to, especially to a freshman. Yeah, and and to, to put the... Uh whipped cream on top of all that academic stuff that, uh, that Dr. Sullen has mentioned is if you're, if you're a parent of an athlete out there, uh, the one thing I'm very, very proud of is our, our athletes had an average of 3.32 GPA last semester. Uh, I think our freshman class ended above 3.0 as an average. So these are tools that, that are, are going to be made available, but the, re the real result is they're getting great grades, uh, including our athletes. Uh, we've had, uh, uh, if your son or daughter uh, does very well academically, uh, next semester, and they get a 3.7 or above, uh, next semester there'll be a parade and they'll get gold stars. Uh, gold stars indicate and they go on the collar indicate that achieve, academic achievement of 3.7 GPA or higher. 
And uh, you'd be surprised how many freshmen get that. Uh, I, I don't remember all the data from the incoming class, but uh, your, your sons and daughters are pretty smart. Uh, the average GPA was 3.56, uh, and the SATs was well above 1180. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, this is a very good place to fine tune that that base uh, intellect that they're coming. Uh, and I think you'll see some really good results. Uh, we stress academics here, and the model we have keeps them uh, focused on on their primary job because what we really want them to do is uh, four years uh, from now is walk across the stage with a diploma on time. And I, I was actually surprised when I got back down in my school and found out how many we have that graduate at three and a half years or three years um, because of their academic excellence. So, uh, and that's the best cost reduction to higher ed that I know of is, uh, <laughs> you know, don't pay tuition for a year, <laughs> you know, that's uh, and, and go make money instead, take care of mom and dad. Uh, so, Roger, sir, uh, pivot now a little bit to some more schedules and, and, and how things will look questions. And uh, one, one correction and expansion uh, on me. Our first game is actually Thursday night. Uh, oh, it's Coastal Carolina. Yeah, it's Coastal Carolina. That's right. And that's, uh, I believe, the uh, 2nd of September. Yeah. So we, we were scheduled. The, the history behind that is uh, – uh, we have a money game every year. Last year we had two or three. Yeah, we had three, four. Uh, that we really like those. I mean, uh, we played Clemson, didn't win, but uh, but it gives you a, a, an idea. I'll tell you a story about what it means. I mean, don't do that, Stanton. Um, we played Clemson. Uh, they beat us, uh, and at halftime, uh, uh, Clemson's coach Dabo came over and said. You want you want to your team want to keep the clock running during the second half and you know kind of shorten the time on the field and um, every member of the team said no we came here to play football uh, and our coach is a great coach all of our coaches are great coaches if your son or daughter is an athlete uh, they are they are another layer of academic advisors to our to our athletes uh, but uh, they wanted that game on Thursday. Uh, because we believe it's going to be nationally televised, and that's why they moved it. And we said that's fine, and uh, that's our that's our money game up there. I can't remember. Do they have that strange colored field? Yeah, like a blue field or something like that. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, along those lines, uh, and you might have said it here. Uh, are we going to have parades? Yeah, you betcha. We're going to have drill. They're going to get rifles. They're going to march around. And when you come down to Parents' Day and you see them marching the parade, you'll be very, very proud. Okay, sir. Along those lines, uh, we all know that Parents' Day, we're playing VMI, and that game is on Saturday, the 2nd of October. But there are questions about that schedule on Parents' Day and how the ring ceremony, what day it will occur and how that will look. So we're, we'll, we'll post that information in, in, in plenty of time for you to react. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, and this is a, a good a place as any to say it, but there were some things, and there might be some class of 22 out there and your parents. Uh, they very much liked how the seniors got their rings last year because they got the ring ceremony. Uh, unfortunately, the parents weren't here, but and they normally will be, but they liked the idea of getting their rings and kind of having a, uh, a, a, a party on the parade deck where we – where we, uh, we truck in some uh, pizza trucks and, uh, and a beer truck, uh, and then they get to hug each other and the band plays and they karaoke and they bond as a, as a, uh, as a class. We, we will, we're going to try and replicate that again this year. Uh, but a, a lot of things we do on this campus, for the, particularly for the class of 2025, are much more open to the families. Uh, Recognition Day is, a, uh, is an event that you can come down and watch your – son or daughter go, go through the recognition ceremony and and uh, quit being a knob. Uh, that's usually uh, sometime in March. Uh, the actual date of that will be up to, uh, it's right around Corday, Day, but it'll be up to the uh, cadet leadership. They'll, they'll, they'll determine when the freshman class is ready to uh, uh, stop and get out of the fourth class system. So uh, that uh, and Parents' Day is uh, – uh, 
it's generally pretty busy. It's one of our bigger parades. Uh, it'll be a, I think it'll, I think it's a full dress parade, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a full dress parade, uh, you know, with the trooping of the colors and all that stuff. So, uh, but that schedule, because of the how we're going to segue the ring ceremony in there, it will be published uh, in plenty of time. As a general rule for all the parents from class 2025, if we make any change to a schedule or, or, or when we set a schedule, we always try to give you at least 30 days notice uh, when, when something gets added to the schedule or shifted uh, because of, uh, uh, for whatever reason, because we know you're trying to make plans. Uh, some things in Charleston we try to keep uh, uh, separated from is big, big events down the College of Charleston and us. We, we don't try to have our graduations, although this year we had to, on the same weekend so that uh, uh, there's more, <laughs> there's more uh, uh, availability uh, out in town for, for, for rooms, et cetera. Uh, we also try to avoid uh, big weekends when they have the bridge run where we have, I don't know, what, 14,000 people coming to Charleston or run across the, you know, the bridge. So we, we try and segue those. So it, it's when you're here, you're focused on, on that. Um, and, and, I, and, and by then, uh, your, your cadets will know where the good restaurants are. And I'm pretty sure they'll be looking for you to uh, feed them a steak in a, in a good place. Okay, sir, uh, a couple of questions about how cadets are assigned to their companies and how they get their roommates. Uh, a few questions, and, and, and I suspect they're from newer parents, on what the legacy program is and, and how and when uh, their, their, their cadet would get involved in that. Yeah, so if, you're, if, you're a cadet, if your cadet's a legacy cadet, uh, there's a legacy program and, uh, and in, in the fourth class system, and they can be assigned to their... Uh, uh, the parents' company. Um, there's a number of options, uh, but we'll uh, uh, definitely honor any legacies. And uh, I'm waiting for the to have a conversation with the commandant on how we can streamline that or make it better. And there's access to that. Uh, there's a, yeah. on the matriculation webpage. Yeah. There's actually the form where you submit it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll get a little random here now. Uh, kind of all over the map. Uh, will cadets who are military reservists uh, be allowed to leave for drill periods, drill weekends, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think to the maximum extent possible, we, we do that. I mean, uh, uh, as, you, as you can imagine, there might be some conflicts that are unavoidable, but generally reserve units also honor what they have to do here. For example, uh, I think during midterms and finals, it's kind of a, you know, hands off, let them, let them, let them do that. Uh, we have a good relationship with all the reserve units around here. And, uh, we have a, a number of, uh, a number of cadets are in the reserves. Roger, sir. Uh, what is the plan? Uh, a couple of different questions, uh, about cadet parking, uh, for juniors, seniors, and then is there any exceptions for sophomores? Uh, juniors and seniors will have assigned parking, uh, not, not yet for the sophomores. Uh, I'll give you the, the rationale for that when we were for the alumni in the audience. As Capers Hall comes down and you see that uh, 165 parking spaces over in Capers Hall are now under uh, piles of rubble and as they're sorting through the concrete and the metal and disposing of it. Uh, there are plans on campus to expand uh, parking, but it's not going to be available this year because of that. In fact, uh, we have some classrooms set up behind uh, 5th Battalion uh, or the side of 4th Battalion in a parking lot there uh, that we had to use to, to build some classroom space so that we could still operate. Um, uh, basically what happened for the alumni was uh, when Bassin Hall got built, uh, the School of Business moved out of Bond Hall over to Bassin Hall. School of Education and, and a lot of our humanities moved over here. Uh, and we have turned some of the MIMS, uh, what used to be faculty housing, into office space for those uh, professors. And uh, uh, and for the alumni, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, Colonel Philip Koski and I walked through uh, Capers Hall right 
right before they, you know, started clawing the walls down. And uh, amazing what you can find in there after 70 years of use <laughs> that they didn't bother taking with them. But uh, uh, so that, that that's what that's what's making campus parking tight right now uh, is this construction. Um, but there are a couple of plans in place to expand it, um, and we're we're working that. It's just not going to happen this year. Do you anticipate having pre-NOB visits? And for those who don't know, those are high school visits uh, that remain overnight in the barracks with cadets. Now, so you're talking about the class of 26. Uh, and yes, sir. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll say it again. We intend to go back to normal operations. Uh, I don't think too many COVID keepers, if you will, except for the ring ceremony and a couple of things we learned on how to organize certain aspects of college life better because of the pandemic will keep, but they're, they're few and far between. There's not that many of them. We're going back to normal operations. Uh, you, you mentioned capers a couple of times, sir. What's the anticipated timeline on the replacement being complete? June of 23. If, if they make the contract timeline, so I'm, I'm sure I'm sure that will be absolutely yeah, on time. I've, on never, target, I've never seen any problem with a construction contract. Hallelujah! For the, for the alumni in there, we should have been building it about eight months ago, uh, but the architectural review board, uh, when we went to get permission to de demo demolished the old building said no so that took that delayed us a, a few a few months but it's coming down now and if you're alumni you come here and they're you know when you drop your kid off there might still see some bricks out in that parking lot feel free you know <laughs> we took all the racks down where were for 70 years cadets hung their jackets and their raincoats and i think uh the foundation's got those they're probably cutting them up for souvenirs right now Okay, uh, a couple of more questions uh, on details for incoming freshmen. Uh, what is the, and, and a couple of parts here, I'll hit them all at once. What is the phone policy uh, after matriculation day, cell phones, and are new freshmen allowed to bring refrigerators? The last one's easy, no. No refrigerators. Uh, uh, the phones are uh, collected uh, for approximately a week or 10 days and they're given back. Um, you know, kind of a funny story. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, three years ago, I think commander Lynn was in on this one. We got a call from a dad from, uh, New Jersey. I think he was from, and, uh, he had complained that he knew that the phone was going to be gone for 10 days during the, the introduction week. Uh, but he thought it was, uh, we're punishing his child because he'd been there. He'd been here for six weeks and had not called him. And could we please give his cell phone back? Um, I think commander Lynn checked the records. And, uh, in fact, uh, he did matriculate on what, 6th of August or whatever the day was, but he also departed the campus on 6th August. Um, so we had to tell him that your, your son left, you know, you dropped him off at seven. He left at noon, and uh, as you peel the, the the story back, he called about a week later. So okay, I found him. Uh, apparently, his girlfriend had driven in trace down here. He matriculated. His parents left, and he jumped in the girlfriend's car. And he'd been spending the summer uh, up in uh, up on the Jersey Shore in a beach house. Uh, but it, and to, to the father's credit, he did call us and say, "Okay, I, I got him now." <laughs> So, but yes, they're, 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 don't bring refrigerators. Uh, you know, there are Coke machines and that kind of thing in the, in the, uh, in the barracks. Uh, they'll get plenty to eat in the chow hall. Uh, we have, uh, for those parents th that, uh, probably remember it, but we've, we've put in a concerted effort in the last 18 months to upgrade the, uh, chow in the, in the chow hall. Uh, we bought new, new equipment, um, and the quality of food has gone gone up dramatically, and uh, you know the the cadets have choices over there on what meal they want. 
um, when we go back to normal operations for the upperclassmen, the, the knobs will eat family style. Uh, but the uh, upperclassmen will go through the speed line and there's healthy options over there. Uh, the cadets have a lot of say on what the 50-day uh, um, menu is. Uh, and they do that through their supply sergeant. They meet and they make recommendations and we usually implement them. Um, but uh, I'm, I've, I've noted that we have a lot of... Uh, Silk milk and, and those kinds of things and and healthy eating you can eat healthy very very easily down here um, And you will as a freshman burn off the calories no matter what you eat Okay, sir uh, pivot off that there are other questions about you know What do they bring their gear in and, and can we have this sort of printer that sort of printer and and I just recommend They're pretty good. Uh, there's pretty good information on our websites and yeah. uh, about what a freshman is uh, is required to bring and, and what yeah. he'll be successful with. Yeah. Uh, another question, um, kind of getting into the weeds here a little bit. Can you can you describe what a one card is and what it's used for? Okay, so, and you've caught me without mine. Uh, a one card is your ID card on campus. Uh, it also, you can load up your one card uh, using a credit card to put $100 on that. And you can actually use it to at, at you know the cadet store, Starbucks, and, and those kinds of things. Generally speaking, uh, most everywhere you use your one card, you get a ten percent discount. Um, I keep you know I, I use it for my laundry over the laundry mat and or, or over the laundry, and and that's just an, an easy way to uh, swipe it in. It also the new ones have if you're a business major have a chip in there that gets you into the School of Business. Okay, sir, uh, we had a couple of, of different questions on, are there any plans to mark uh, the class of 2020, who, as we all know, did not have an in-person commencement last spring? Yeah. Uh, are, are we anticipating or discussing any way to, to acknowledge them on campus? Yeah, well, so we... So the, the story of the class of 2020 uh, was uh, when we had to, you know, they, they went they went on spring break, uh, and we anticipated them being back because the common common thought back then was a hey, two weeks of lockdown and this will all be by, and and that didn't happen, and they had a virtual uh, uh, virtual graduation, uh, and we had committed at that time to have a long gray line parade for them in September because we were all sure and CDC was all sure that by September, the vast majority of this would be behind us. Oh, well, that didn't happen either. Uh, what we did offer was uh, offered to get my picture taken with anybody that wanted to come by. About 65 of the cadets during that summer uh, meandered over to the house in their full dress and, and, and I threw on my dress uniforms where you get graduation pictures. Those are still options. Um, we did reach out to some of the leadership of the class 2020. I don't remember who, but we're open to whatever they want to do. But uh, what we found is a lot of them are either in the military now and uh, stationed elsewhere, or they're actually becoming very, very wealthy because they, you know, because 85% of our cadets when they walk across the stage already have jobs before they even graduate. Um, so they, they're on with life. So uh, if the class of 2020 wants to put together some special thing, then we'll also uh, entertain that. Uh, just that when we, we try to do it from our end, there was a lot of, or I'd love to, but I'm, I'm, I'm going on a submarine, or I'd love to, but I'm in Japan. And um, so uh, if we get enough of a, of a corpus that wants to do that, obviously we'll, we'll always try to, to honor the class of 2020. Okay, sir, uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, we talked about the cell phones. We talked about parades and masks. Uh, how are freshmen assigned their roommates? And there have been a bunch of questions on that. 
that ask if it, it has something to do with uh, their academic status or their major mm -hmm. or w if they have a no. choice. Is, it's a whole no. variety of things. No, no, they'll, they'll be assigned roommates. Uh, I'll tell you that, uh, you know, there is some attrition uh, uh, when they come down here. I mean, there there are some some knobs that come down here for the wrong reason because their parents thought this was the right place. They didn't want to come. My plea to the parents is, you know, this is a great place to excel in life because you got a good, strong academic background and you got the good leadership background and you know how to get things done. That's what we teach you. Uh, but you got to want to come here. Um, if your son or daughter does not want to come here, don't force them. Uh, and the reason I say that is to answer this question is, as we uh, see that attrition, and it's not that much, but they then have to rearrange rooms and, you know, because what we don't want is we don't want a freshman whose roommate left to be in a room by himself. Because uh, that's the lowest form of a team effort is two roommates. Uh, because they take care of the room together, they help each other out. And so those kind of moves will, will go probably until the, the, the attrition kind of peters out uh, probably around, you know, right, we have very little attrition after academics start. Uh, and I, my plea to the parents is, you know, uh, when they do call you uh, and they want to leave, um, make sure it's the right decision for them, but also uh, counsel them to give it a shot when you get into academics. It's a different experience here when you're at academics. If you, if you look at cadre, uh, the cadre 10 days, that's basically assimilation and a, a basic uh, training kind of uh, uh, activity, and it doesn't last that long. Uh, it's not it's not like Marine boot camp or you know where it's 13, 14 weeks long. This is this is about 10 days, and you'd be surprised how well they march. They learn how to wear their uniforms, and they'll continue to uh, learn those things. But when academics start, it's a different it's a different experience, and that's what they're here for. It's both of it. We try and get the front end military up to step so that everybody can operate, and then we get in academics, and then they'll merge. Okay, sir, uh, a couple of questions about uh, ROTC and its impact on a few things, and I'll bind them together. Okay. Uh, first is our ROTC, or folks that are on, and if you're a freshman coming in, you're on an ROTC scholarship. Are they treated different, uh, differently in matriculation in the initial training? And how does it work when the ROTC scholarship hits the finance side? When does that usually happen? And how are the parents aware of that so they can reconcile uh, their accounts? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the treatment part, and I think I'm going to let you talk about Federal money generally shows up on time. Uh, are they treated different? No. Uh, there will be a time... Uh, uh, in, in their cadre that if they are a four-year scholarship uh, and it's Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines, they will put a <clears throat> little badge on their uh, left-hand pocket that will identify them as a contract uh, <coughs> contract student for that service. Uh, and the ROTC departments are, are manned uh, by active duty colonels and uh, instructors over there for the ROTC component. Um, and they will start working with your with your son or your daughter to make sure that uh, they start assimilating into what that service is uh, interested in, in teaching them. And they have those labs two times a week uh, in the afternoons. Um, I don't I don't I have never heard of a problem of a four year scholarship student uh, not getting their tuition paid for. Uh, by the federal government, and we have people in finance that right. <laughs> track that. Well, bills are going to be released July 6th, and if your son or daughter is on an ROTC scholarship and for whatever reason it doesn't appear, I would encourage you to reach out to the treasurer's office. We do code that into our system, um, and we are aware no matter when the money comes, if a person is on a four-year ROTC scholarship, the treasurer's office knows how to handle that. But if you have a question, I encourage you to reach out to the school. It's something that we can easily address. All right, sir. I think we're, we're going to have time for one more question and then any closing remarks. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a repeat 
and it's come up twice. Uh, what time do we anticipate matriculation day beginning? Zero seven hundred, I believe. Roger, sir. That's, I say that because it's been that way for, I don't know, 70 years or something like that. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a three-hour three, three hour window that we'll, yeah. we'll bring them on. Yeah. yeah, but it starts at 7. Uh, normally, you know, uh, if I walk out to Hagood Avenue, I'll see the cars lined up uh, uh, earlier than that. And when the gates open, uh, the cadets will direct you. It does not take long to... Uh, drop your son and daughter off. Uh, the fam uh, Siddle Family Association will get them and their stuff, and you're you're more than welcome to accompany them and look at their room. And you know, um, don't don't make their bed for them. We're going to teach them how to do that our way. But uh, but it starts at seven. Uh, people generally are lined up, uh, and uh, when you drop your son and daughter off, you get the information at McAllister Fieldhouse. We will be out there as long, along with a number of the staff. If we're in a uniform that looks like this or that or an Air Force uniform or a Navy uniform, uh, please, uh, if you have a question, ask them. If they don't know the answer, they'll know where to get it. Uh, don't leave here without any with a question in your mind that you'd like answered. And we are pretty transparent with everything that goes on on campus. Uh, feel free to call ask questions, but uh, uh, when we matriculate them, we want to get them in the barracks, want to get them ready, and it'll be a compressed time, but it's all focused on when they make that first step on that Monday morning out of the barracks uh, to get to their first class. And the faculty uh, love getting the new cadets on, uh, on, on campus. Um, we all here understand that uh, there's a lot of choices out there for higher ed. We believe our model is the best. Uh, our data shows it and our rankings show that. Uh, we call it the Siddle effect. Uh, when you walk out of this college, you will uh, be walking out uh, in the number one school in South Carolina. Uh, in, in fact, above MUSC, and if there's any MUSC grads, I'm sorry, but this year we're the number one on uh, on graduates of the first five years after graduation and, and salary earnings, uh, they have the we have the highest uh, uh, rate of uh, full full employment upon graduation. Uh, our academics are superior, much better than I've seen it uh, in in my career. So, uh, the value proposition at the Citadel is something that's well worth uh, the time and effort, and and that's the ultimate prize to get a ring on your finger uh, your senior year in October and then get your diploma in May uh, and that will set you up and and what you'll see for the class 2025 is you will uh, have bonds with your classmates hopefully all of them uh, that will last a lifetime um, so that's our value proposition uh, but I also know that you have to trust that we're going to take care of your son and daughter. We will challenge them, uh, but they will be successful at this school. Sir, I think that's a fabulous way to wrap this evening up. Uh, encourage everyone uh, for some of the detailed questions that we maybe didn't get to, to please go to citadel.edu and do a search. I think you're going to find most of your answers there. If not, uh, give us a call at any of the numbers you find there, and we'll get you, like the general said, to the right person with the right answer. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight and spending this time with us for the class of 2025. We look forward to seeing you in August. And for everyone else, we look forward to seeing you uh, soon after for uh, what we anticipate to be a normal year. Good night.